Okay, good morning, Paul. Um, our first question today is just give, uh, give our audience a brief overview of your business, products and services. Sure, so Challenger is a geomatics firm. Uh, we're long-standing, we've been around since 1984. We started in the oil and gas industry in the Beaufort Sea. We're entirely employee held. Approximately 40% of our employees are shareholders in Challenger. Uh, yeah, and we tell people where things are, uh, and if they need something put in a certain place, that's what we do. Second question, what problems does Challenger solve for your clients? Right, well, I sort of touched on that with the first one, but uh, if people uh, need to know where something is, uh, to the millimeter or to the meter, we, we can figure that out. Uh, sometimes that means billions of points for uh, a plant site. Sometimes it means uh, a well center shot. Uh, we can also position things. Uh, so if, uh, if you need something laid out in a very precise location, we do that. Um, but more practically, we try to be trusted advisors to our clients. And so we help them figure out issues that they maybe don't have solutions to, and we may not have solutions right off the hop, but we work with them to come up with those solutions. Great answer, Paul. Uh, third question, what new opportunities is Challenger looking at to develop or grow uh, this year and in the future? Yeah, so we're working hard on something we, we're calling virtual visualization. Uh, so there's so much spatial data out there. Of course, Challenger collects a lot of spatial data. There's also a lot of crowdsourced spatial data available or publicly available spatial data. So we use that data uh, to help our clients make better decisions. So what does that mean? It means they don't necessarily have to go to site to, to make decisions. And often we can provide them better uh, information than they are if they're actually on site on the ground because we can create 3D fly throughs. Uh, really interesting products that really help them get an idea of ground conditions uh, on their project sites. How have you adapted your business for COVID and, uh, and the changing environment? Yeah, we were sort of lucky with COVID and that we got a, a trial run uh, a year before and that our, our Calgary office in the middle of the night had, uh, suffered an explosion. So we went virtual overnight in Calgary, which is one of our larger offices. So we had a lot of experience in, in, in going over going virtual quickly. So that was that was a quick pivot for us. Um, it also freed up a lot of time. We have a lot of key resources like any company and those people are always busy. They, they, have, they have great ideas, but they don't have the time to, to bring them to fruition often. And uh, when everything, when the bottom fell out, those people became free. And so we were able to act on a lot of things that had been, would have been nice to have done before. And, and so this virtual access or virtual visualization thing I spoke of, that was one of the things we were able to, devote a lot of time and energy to. Okay, now how about tell us how you've expanded your products and services to include renewables and clean tech? Sure, a lot of our clients, of course, uh, on the oil and gas sector are looking uh, to new business lines, including renewables, or to, or to support their existing business lines with renewable resources. Um, so we've been in working in that space for a few years in Alberta and in the North. Uh, a really good example of uh, a project we're working on now is the Traverse Solar Farm, which you've probably heard of. It's approximately four times bigger than any other solar farm built in Canada to this date. So we're working on selling 228,000 piles on that site and doing the quality assurance for those piles. Uh, and in doing a project of that size, it's given us a lot of opportunity to develop really streamlined and innovative processes, both in the field and the office, so that we can deliver what is a very tight timeline and compressed timeline. Okay. How has uh, Challenger developed any First Nation partnerships or business or special agreements with uh, one or more First Nations? Yeah, Challenger is a leader in Indigenous relations for sure. Uh, we have eight agreements, four of which are wholly owned, are uh, full companies. And in those cases, our partners, our Indigenous partners are the majority owners and we're the managing partner. Uh, the other four agreements are more an MOU style, but in, in all our agreements, our corporate values point us towards more than just a financial benefit to the First Nation. We want to contribute to the community in other ways. And so that's something that, uh, that we do in all cases. Okay. Um, second and last question. What are some of the community and charitable activities that uh, Challengers, Challenger is involved in? So our, our community involvement and charitable community involvement kind of rests on three pillars, one of which is that we want our staff to be engaged in this already. We want to be the staff member to be a lever engaging challenger so that they can bring more impact. Uh, second one, we want it to be communities that we are working in uh, so that we're engaged in already. And the third one is we want it to serve uh, disadvantaged groups. So examples of some of the uh, 
as we contributed to in 2021 were um, food banks, uh, animal shelters, um, that kind of thing. Okay, great answer. Uh, last uh, last question. Um, if there's one thing that would help grow the business, um, what would it be, Paul? Yeah, I think it's, I'll give you two things. Um, so it's, they're very tightly tied, one of which is investing in our people. Uh, so we invest heavily in our people because that allows us to do these interesting projects and be really tightly connected with our clients. And, and we can't offer that level of service without investing in our people, but it's, it's really all about being tightly connected to our clients so that they trust us. We're in that trusted advisor role. If they have a question they don't know an answer to, uh, or they don't, they don't see a path forward, they come to us and we, we help them figure that out. And, and we can't do that without engaged and talented staff. Okay, great, awesome answer. And that brings us to the uh, conclusion of today's interview. 